G'day! In this video I'm going to turn this into this. The video will cover the steps taken to build a small, detailed section of the layer. We'll go through making the rock terrain, the scratch-built curved trestle bridge, and a little crossing leading up to a wooden cabin. The challenge we have here is building a bridge under the track rather than building the track over the bridge. It's a bit tricky visualising 3D textures and objects, so often the best thing to do is to break it down to basic shapes first. Paper is the easiest way to make a 2D template, as you can keep trimming it along the edges until you're happy. I also run my finger along the track to create a crease line for marking out where the edge of the track is. I'm going to create landmass following this general direction. One of the goals for a small layout is to make it seem bigger and more interesting than it really is. To help achieve this illusion, I'm creating several little scenes that work independently of each other, but are also connected to the overall theme. This is a similar concept to garden design, where you create rooms in your garden. Each room is a self-contained area, but they all link together, often with a small interconnecting section that offers the viewer a hint of what lies beyond and entices them to explore further. Alright, it's time to test this first piece of extruded polystyrene. This end section will be carved away, as I'd like the rock structure to taper up toward the height of the track. Material will need to be added in here to carefully match the height of this flexi track. From here I'll start gluing the pieces together and slowly build up the shapes. I glue the extruded polystyrene, or XPS, using a paintable acrylic gap filler. It's really cheap and doesn't set too hard, which makes it easier for carving across the glue seams. I test the clearance with a wagon and it's time to start carving. I've got another video that details my fake realistic rock making process, but basically I'm creating a predominantly horizontal style of rock using a sharp blade. The main goal is to create organic lines and hide any knife marks. I also want to hide any flat seams where the XPS has been glued together. This piece took me about 20 minutes, which includes test fitting on the layout a few times and taking a look from multiple angles. I use a rough brush to further soften the foam, give it more of a porous finish. This helps the paint stick, as well as creating more of an organic texture to the finished surface. I start with black latex paint. Sometimes I'll squirt the foam with isopropyl alcohol first, which helps the paint soak into cracks. After the black dries, Take a close look for any foam showing through and touch up if necessary. I then give the rock a fairly heavy dry brushing of mid-grey. When that dries, I highlight the rocks with some white, but only sparingly. If the rocks are left black, grey and white, they tend to look a little cold, so I airbrush the rocks with some watered down form to match the other rocks on the layout. The overall palette for my layout is a dusty, earthy, sepia tone, so I'm always thinking about how it'll all hang together in the end. These are now ready to glue in. All I do is run a few score lines underneath the foam and then glue them in with regular PVA glue.
The next step is to start building up the landform using a sculptor mold. This stuff can take a couple of days to dry, then it's time to base coat in the same fawn colour I used to airbrush the rocks. We use a fairly quick and simple weathering technique for the tracks using an airbrush. First I insert a piece of wire into the switch rails of the points to protect them from paint. I'm only running two colours through the airbrush. First I apply a coat of very dark brown all over the track. I used a Vallejo German Black Brown. When that's dry I use Vallejo Light Rust and try to target just the side of the rails. I'll do some touching up with the black brown to touch up overspray. The final step of track weathering will be done with a powdered tint later when everything's ballasted. I'm running a track cleaner here to clean the top of the rails before the paint goes too hard. I find gluing a track cleaning eraser onto a stick makes it easier to apply an even pressure as well as getting through those tunnel entrances. It's time to start building the trestle bridge. I'm using my homemade chopper which makes it easy to cut multiple pieces of the same length. You can find the video on how I built this chopper on the channel. This is actually hardwood I'm cutting and it knocks the razor blade around. I had to replace the blade after making the bridge. You get a neater cut by cutting through halfway, then rotating the stock around to cut it from the other side. To give the timber an aged look, I give them a bath in a mixture of Indian ink and water. Sometimes I gave them two coats so there's more variation in the timber. The dry brushing starts with an off white. I'm using bone white, which is quite warm. Then I finish with a little bit of pure white. Now this trestle bridge is not built to realistic scale or to comply with any structural integrity. There's no footings, no flashings, no proper guard rails, or accurate scaling of girts and stringers. We made a conscious decision when starting the layout that while it needed to create some suspension of disbelief, we weren't going to sweat over making everything scale perfect. I've glued timber to work around available space. This is to provide adequate passageway for trains on the lower track and also work around the rocky formations. What I'm trying to achieve is a bridge that blends in with its natural environment. This is the story of a rough and ready mining locality set in the mid 1900s. I took photos of real trestle bridges in my local area, then based the design loosely on what I found. Earlier in the video I was talking about creating interconnecting scenes. This little section of the layout offers a perspective of trains emerging from under the trestle bridge, so I want to create some visual interest. I'm going to add a little cabin with an avid train spotter watching trains passing by. I'm using a laser cut wood kit from Blair Line. It's called the Joe's Cabin and Outhouse Kit. I start by priming all the parts. This will prevent the pieces from curling up when painted. I then build up colour with a few coats of wood brown and white. I use an X-Acto knife to cut away the parts and scrape surfaces clean that will be glued. I like to use a wooden skewer and glue with Mod Podge matte. This glue dries matte, which is perfect for any surfaces that will be visible in the layout. I go through after this when it's dry and reinforce with a stronger PVA glue. I also glue an extra supports inside the model where possible. In this shot, I'm carefully punching a hole through the base 
so I can access the interior for LED lighting. Overall the kit was quite well designed and the instructions were clear and well presented. I created some corrugated roofing with the outhouse and the side extension to offer some Australian authenticity. When the model was finished I weathered it with a sepia wash and touched up a few areas. I like to use standard non-mixed colours for models so it's easy to match the colours when you're touching up later. To complete the scene I'm adding a dirt texture over the area. The dirt is real dirt, finely sifted. I sometimes add a little bit of beige coloured colour hardener powder. This is the stuff they use to stencil concrete driveways. But you can just use light coloured grout which works fine. I missed the area with isopropyl alcohol to reduce the surface tension and a missing of Mod Podge mat mixed with water. It's about two to three parts water with one part medium. A little tip for your glue spray bottle, always pump fresh water through the spraying mechanism after using it so you don't get glue clogging up the system. I'm building a crossing over the tracks. I cut the ends off a Q-tip to make a drain pipe then spray it with grey primer. I've also used a texture paint from Citadel in the gutter here. It's called a Grillum Earth and it shrinks to create cracks when dry. To ballast the tracks, I'm sprinkling on some end scale ballast using a spoon. After smoothing it out with a brush and my fingers, I tap it with a spoon to help it settle. I use an eyedropper to soak the ballast with isopropyl. Then I use the dropper again to soak in the Mod Podge glue mixture. I'll let that dry before checking for any ballast that needs cleaning off. To finish weathering the track, I apply a dusting of weathering powder along the middle and sides of the track. I'm using a humbrol powder and the colour is called smoke. I brush in some shavings of burnt sienna soft pastel to give the worn areas a lighter hue. I haven't filmed the static grass application because I'd like to upgrade the applicator I built from a fly zapper. Basically, for end scale grass, I limit the static grass height to three millimeters. I apply patches of glue and sprinkle various combinations of synthetic fine turf around the edges. The scene really comes to life when you add little details. I've used some off cuts from the cabin kit as a heap of timber. I've also recycled an old boat and some various details to add interest to the scene. I've wired in a single yellow 3mm LED which is connected to my lighting switchboard on the control panel. I glue in drinking straws from the bottom of the layout and then the LED with its wires is a friction fit so it can easily be replaced if required. Overall I'm happy with the finish. It's almost like building a diorama but eventually everything connects together to form a story. I hope you enjoyed the film. Please support the channel by subscribing and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you.